Folks, being a guest on a podcast is perhaps the most effective way to build your own credibility and authority on what you know or what your company does. You can get booked as a guest on lots of podcasts, and Outlier Audio is great at helping you do just that. Outlier Audio focuses on getting entrepreneurs, investors, and business professionals booked on podcasts. Tell your brand story without the need to interrupt an audience with an ad. Be the reason they listen to the podcast. Get started with a five-podcast booking trial to see if you like it. Find out more at outlieraudio.com slash bookme. That's outlieraudio.com slash bookme. On this episode of Winfluence. What you said was, so you know there's maybe software or places you can run uh, ads against Cristiano Ronaldo's followers, right? That's not exactly true. What you can do is you can run a lookalike audience. So you can, you're telling Facebook and their massive algorithms, I want to run ads against the people that look like Ronaldo's followers. When you're using our audiences, you're using exactly individuals who are engaged with Ronaldo. Why does that matter? Because the way Facebook algorithms work, they're going to give you a million lookalikes and those lookalikes change every single day. They're different than yesterday's million and they're going to be different than tomorrow's million, which means you can never penetrate that audience. There's a difference between being an influencer and actually influencing. I'm Jason Falls and in this podcast, we explore the people, companies, campaigns and stories that illustrate that difference. Welcome to Winfluence, the influence marketing podcast. Hello again, friends. Thanks for listening to Winfluence, the Influence Marketing Podcast. What if we have the formula for influencer marketing all wrong? What if all this organic content creation and brand collaborations are like driving the wrong way down a one-way street? No, I'm not throwing this out there as hyperbole. I mean it. What if we have it wrong? Let's deconstruct the construct for a minute. What we're trying to do is persuade an audience to take action. We want them to buy or try our product, become more aware of what we're doing, or persuade them to think a certain way about one thing or another. Where is influencer marketing in that equation? Well, it's in the middle. They are a channel to get to that audience, assuming we can't get to them otherwise, or perhaps it's an additional way to get to them to complement the other paths we carve. The question we raise here on Winfluence frequently is why then are we focused on the influencer if what we're really trying to do is influence. We need to be focused more on the audience. What if we could target an influencer's audience, but not have to risk taking anything away from their relationship with that audience and still compensate them for being able to do so? One company has taken that approach, reverse engineer the process, and focus on getting brand advertisements in front of the most relevant segment of an influencer's audience the actual people, not lookalikes, to compare ad performance against its regular social ad buys. When you find an influencer audience segment that works, you're more efficient and effective with your spend and succeed faster. The company is called Posse, posse posse.io online. Its CEO and founder Aaron Bruce and I caught up recently. He helped me blow up everything I thought was the best way to leverage influencers and chart a different path to influence marketing without disregarding or disrespecting the influencers. In fact, brands using Posse's approach not only compensate the influencer, but help them keep sponsored content from watering down their organic high-engagement posts. Get out your notebooks and open your minds today, kids. We're going to look at the industry very differently after you hear my chat with Bruce today on the show. Before we get to that, I want to touch on two fantastic supporters of Winfluence. You've heard me talk about Tagger quite a bit on this show. That's because they are our presenting sponsor. Tagger is a complete influencer marketing software solution. With it, you can find, prioritize, connect, and collaborate with, measure, and even pay the content creators you use for your influencer programs. I could go on, but you know I use it. You know I like it. You know I use it a lot. You know I talk about it a lot. You should check it out, too. It might be right for you or your brand or your agency. Go to jason.online slash tagger to get a free demo and see if tagger is right for you. That URL again, jason.online slash tagger. And you may have heard me talking about LinkedIn either before the show or maybe during the breaks lately. That's because LinkedIn has partnered with me to offer you a $100 advertising credit to get your message in front of the right kind of decision makers. 
I use LinkedIn advertising to target leads based on job descriptions, company, seniority, industry, and more. That means I'm not wasting advertising spend getting my message in front of people who are not my ideal customer. You can too. LinkedIn is offering you, listeners of Winfluence, you a $100 ad credit just for listening to Winfluence. Go to linkedin.com slash Winfluence today. That's right, linkedin.com slash Winfluence. $100 in free ad credits. Like, do I need to hit you over the head? Go do that. LinkedIn.com slash Winfluence. We are going to reverse engineer and blow up everything you think about the right way to leverage influencers today. Aaron Bruce, the CEO of Posse.io, is next on Winfluence. Support for Winfluence and all the shows on the Marketing Podcast Network is provided by Storyblock. There's no better way to future-proof your business than switch to a headless content management system. That means one place to update all your digital content. 82% of those who have switched to a headless CMS like Storyblock report better productivity, efficiency, and revenue. Sign up for a free account to test and see for yourself at storyblock.com slash Winfluence. That's storyblock without the C dot com slash Winfluence. Aaron, you have an interesting take on how brands can partner with influencers. So I don't want to waste any time. I want to get right into it. Uh, (laughs) Tell me a little bit about Posse.io and how you guys approach that brand to influencer relationship, because it's a really interesting win-win, but then I want to ask you a few questions about it. So give us the elevator pitch. Yeah, yeah, we we are we're quite different than the average uh, the average Joe for sure. So we take the whole game a little differently, and I, I kind of like to go back to one of your podcasts you did on um, pricing. Right, you were mm-hmm. you're concerned about stepping on some toes and about the pricing uh, of uh, influencer goods. Let's call it that, right? Yeah. And and that's that's kind of where we we. Uh, where we start from is the, is the pricing and that's what's going on today in the marketplace. And so many brands and so many agencies are, are paying, you know, some crazy numbers for, um, for, let's just call it influencer, influencer work, if you will, mm-hmm. um, without looking behind the scenes, without looking, pulling the curtain back, without seeing exactly what's going on. And I don't, when I say that there's a lot of people right now listening, going, Oh, engagement likes that kind of stuff. No, not, none of that stuff. So, um, to, you know, to give you a, there's no quick elevator pitch other than, what we do is, um, you know, we pull the curtain back and it's good for everybody. What we do is we, we reverse engineer the entire system. So we don't want brands and we don't want advertisers looking for influencers. That's the wrong direction. What you're looking for is an audience. You're looking for a group of people that are willing to buy your product or service. And at the end of the day, that's, that's all that matters. That's all the stockholders want. That's all the company wants. But it's gotten diluted. It's gotten, you know, when something doesn't work... You, you put away the transparency, you know, and you, you, you put this game out, this little play, if you will. And that's what we're doing with social media. That's a joke. And the, the thing I say around here is kind of goofy is that, you know, when, when people are using social media to gain a following for their company or their brand or what have you, that's like using a SpaceX rocket to light a cigarette. <laughs> and there, you know, there's so much technology behind social media marketing, behind the digital world of social media marketing. There is so much. I mean, Facebook has buildings humming, you know, with servers, mm-hmm. crunching numbers at all times, doing the information is absolutely amazing, right? But yet we still have all these brands that are falling for this um, this comical joke of, well, we're building a following. We're getting likes. We're getting engagements. You know, what did you pay for that post you just did with that influencer? Oh, yeah, we paid, well, you know, X thousands and tens of thousands, hundred thousand millions. And how to do, you know, are your stockholders happy? Oh, no, no. Well, we're, we're building a following. We're getting a lot of likes and engagement. Well, at the end of the day, that means just about nothing. So <laughs> it's, I mean, when I say that, you know, I've been pissed a lot of people off as I always do. Um, <clears throat> and I'll go back real quick to a, a story when, when we got, when we knew we were, really causing a problem. We went to a, uh, this was right before COVID. We went to, I was invited to speak at a, um, and I was on a panel speaking and they were kind of going down the panel and they had some, some, uh, you know, some bright young ladies there working with, I believe it was Hyatt, one of the big hotels, one of their, 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 their um, luxury lines. And they were explaining to the audience 
how they use social media, you know, to build that brand. And when they were done, I, I couldn't help but, you know, they asked me my comments and that was probably wasn't a great thing to do, <laughs> to do because, <laughs> you know, they, I listened to them tell me that they find influencers and they go out there and they, they harvest these great influencers and they, and then they bring them in house, right. And they train them to the, to the, the let's just say it was Hyatt, uh, the Hyatt brand and they, and they fly them around the country and they put them in different hotels and so forth. And, and they experience that and they post about it. Well, in our business, uh, they just took a really good influencer and they destroyed him and they just completely corrupted his following his, um, and, I, and I'll explain why. Um, so we were kind of explaining to the audience exactly how our software works. And what we do is opposed to doing something like that, right? We reverse engineer it and you take a hotel like Hyatt or any hotel and you find out exactly what they're trying to accomplish. And obviously that's in a hotel world, that's bookings, right? You're looking for people who travel. You're looking for people who are going to certain destinations. Um, and so what we do is we provide, this is gets where it gets deep. We provide those types of audiences to that brand, right? Mm -hmm. And then within a day, it could be a month, a week, but typically within a day, we can take that brand's, that hotel's ads, they're already running, and we can place them in front of pools of audiences to find out which pool has the best uh, customer base for that, that hotel. And then once we find that pool of people, we look and see who's who they're following. Who's that influencer? We don't care who the influencer is up front. Nobody should care. That, that's why we reverse this whole system. Looking for an influencer is ridiculous. You're looking for a pool of people. So what our software does, it finds the people first, finds the customers of that hotel, and then we'll say, hey, these customers are all following Joe. So Joe's the guy, right? If you, if, if you want an influencer, let's go talk to Joe. But in our system, in our software, you don't have to do that. You can continue using Joe's audiences or other audiences like Joe's to run your ads for incredible hyper-focused converting opposed to finding an influencer. And then just because they post about something that you think your hotel or your shoe company or what might like, whatever, and then having them endorse or, or, or post, you know, for you, that's, it's ridiculous. And, but this entire industry has been built on that and it's absolutely comical. And that's why so many Influencer, cam influencer campaigns fail. All right. So let me kind of unpack this a little bit and, and, and make sure that we, uh, I understand what you're saying, make sure the audience can follow along and understand yeah. what you're saying too. All right. So if you are using, I, I love the mentality of we're not looking for influencers, we're looking for audiences. That, that sounds smart to me because ultimately that's who you're trying to reach. Um, and I'm assuming because you are playing in the influencer marketing space, you're talking about finding audiences through influencers. So are you, uh, does your software or does your company go out and say, okay, here's, let's say Cristiano Ronaldo, just for an, as an example, uh, bad example, because he's got more followers than anybody, but whatever. So let's say you're looking at, okay, we, we know who follows Cristiano Ronaldo because uh, all of the, the APIs allow us to look at the number of followers. Are you looking at it that way through the API? Are you somehow going through the influencer and getting special authorization? How do you get to that influencer's audience to know who they are? Most of the time, the influencers are brought to us by the brand. They'll say they're working with or they want to work with or, you know, they're they're dealing with these people here or this collection of info, whoever it might be, and they bring those to us, right? If not, we, we certainly have a lot of influencers, and I'll explain in a minute why, and they come and sign into our system, you know, without a brand attached to them. Okay. Um, because they monetize, and I'll explain how they get monetized. So one way or the other, the, the influencer comes into our system, right? And let's go to your, you know, let's, let's talk about Ronaldo. So you, you have Ronaldo comes in, right? And when he comes into our system, our, our software automatically breaks down every single one of his posts, right? And when we break down his posts, I mean, I take each and every post he's done um, the past couple of years, perhaps. And then we break, down, break those down. So every time an influencer makes a post, what he's doing is he's subdividing his following. Mm -hmm. And to us, this is where the gold is, right? So if you let influencers do what they do and you don't disrupt them like – my previous example of a hotel chain, you let an influencer do what they do. Now we know they're predominantly not great salespeople, but they're really good at segmenting and entertaining. So let them do what they do. And what I mean by that is like, 
an influencer got to where they were because they're posting something or they're a person that that people like to follow, right? Mm-hmm. But by their but they're really good at segmenting those people. So look at Ronaldo, right? I think he's got probably 160, maybe 200 thousand followers. I mean, 200 million followers. Yeah. Like that. So he has such a huge audience. But every time he posts, the people that are interested in that particular topic will typically engage in that particular post, right? Mm-hmm. So if you look at Ronaldo, and again, using him as a great example, he'll be on vacation and he'll get certain engagement for those, those vacation posts. And then he's doing a practice and he's doing mm-hmm. some tips or something. He's going to get a different engagement there. So his following is overwhelming on the big picture, but in the hyper-focused pictures, what we use is not – we can take just the people who are engaged with his training sessions. Those are the people that soccer brands or, you know, any outdoor race, another brand wants, or perhaps his vacation posts, they might apply completely different back to that hotel or to some food companies. But so that's the difference. You, we let the influencer break up their, their, their followers. And then we use those as the audiences by which we, we advertise into. Okay. And so when you say you're going, you're advertising into them, it's not that you're going, the, so if I'm a brand and I bring you, you know, 20 or 30 or 40 or how many ever uh, influencers, these are the ones I want to work with. Mm-hmm. You're going to break down their audiences. You're going to break down their posts. You're going to come back to me and say, here are the audiences that you need to run your ads against, not necessarily go, go hire that influencer and get them to create content for you. Is that you're, right? You're absolutely correct. We're never telling you, Hey, go, go get endorsed. We're going to provide you with the people that you need to be advertising your product to. So okay. you're, what you said is exactly right. We'll give you the audiences that you need to be running your ads into. But the most, the most beautiful thing about our system is that you don't make a lot of mistakes because we can take an ad and we can present it into those people and you'll know within an hour, a day, whatever you choose to pull out or not. And how that works is you're already running ads in your own audiences. So let's go, let's go back to Ronaldo and let's use Nike, right? Nike is already running ads in their own audiences and they know their conversion rate. Um, They know exactly where they're converting. So if we give them an audience of Ronaldo's and they run that ad against that audience, if they're not getting a better conversion rate, you stop the ad immediately, right? If you're getting a better one, you keep going. So with our system, Within a day, you know what's going on, opposed to paying an influencer for a post. And, you know, how long does that take to even do that? 90 days to even get that going. And then finally, you make the post and you're hoping and praying something happens. It goes on and on and on. So, right. Yeah. Is there merit, though, to doing both? Is there merit yeah. to, to having the partnership with the influencer, but then also leveraging your intelligence to advertise your own stuff to their audience? You know, that's a, another great question. Uh, it's why you do what you do, I guess. Um, yeah, there's situations where you, you, you certainly want to be able to engage that that influencer. And, and, and what I will explain in a minute is how the influencer does monetize through our system. He wins through our system. He doesn't lose. He, he's very happy using our system. Um, yeah, there's certain situations where you're like, wow, this, this, this guy is gold. There's no reason not to engage with him and let's, let's run this thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so absolutely, both, both can, can work. All right. So let's talk a little bit about, cause I mean, I, I, if I'm not mistaken, I can go and take out an ad for company X and I can target Cristiano Ronaldo's followers. And I guess using the Intel and the data that you're giving me back, I can, you know, target, I can probably set up a system where I can target uh, his posts, but his posts in certain topics and whatnot. And that makes sense to me. But I know that you've also mentioned that the influencers can also come to you and, or you can reach out and say, Hey, influencer X, here's our system. Here's how you benefit from it. So if I'm the influencer, sell me on this system. Why should I join your posse? Let's back up a minute. I'm going to address something you said, which is so important. Okay. What you said was, so, you know, there's maybe software or places you can run uh, ads against Cristiano Ronaldo's followers, right? Mm -hmm. Well, I don't mean to correct you, but that's not exactly true. Okay. Well, can, no, please yeah. correct me. Yeah. <laughs> that's what we're well, here for. A lot of advertisers think that. A lot of brands think that, but that's not true. Okay. All you can do, and it's a huge difference. What you can do is you can run a lookalike audience. So mm-hmm. you can, you're telling Facebook and, and their massive algorithms, I want to run ads against the people that look like Ronaldo's followers, right? Mm-hmm. So their algorithm will give you a collection of people and given the size you want, let's go say you want, a, you want an audience of a million people. 
they're going to give you a million people that look like Ronaldo's audience, right? And you're like, oh, well, what, what, what's the difference? You know, it, it's still works for me. Well, it doesn't because when you're using our audiences, you're using exactly individuals who are engaged with Ronaldo. I don't mean lookalikes and I don't mean they're the exact number of people. So let's just say again, it's a million people, right? You're going to put your ad into a million actual people. Why does that matter? Because the way Facebook algorithms work, they're going to give you a million lookalikes and those lookalikes change every single day. It's like, imagine if you will, a set of gates, right? And there's a million people going through these gates every day. Every day your ad runs into those million people. They're different than yesterday's million and they're mm-hmm. going to be different than tomorrow's million, which means you can never penetrate that audience. Mm-hmm. It just means you're going to, your ad's going to keep showing up to another million people that look like his audience. There's a huge difference here, massive difference. So if you saw the, the, the results behind those type of campaigns, it would, it would blow you away. You would be absolutely blown away. But the difference between putting an ad into a group of people who are an actual group of people who do not change day to day compared to a running gate of people, night and day difference. Well, it's, yeah. it's the difference between reach and frequency, right? You're, you're adding frequency to the equation. Bingo. Bingo. Yeah. Huh. So yeah, okay. that is a, it's a common misunderstanding. It's kind of like, you know, it's kind of like uh, the amount of people who think, Oh, I've got a following, right? So I've built this big following for my brand. And, you know, the, the social media people are doing their job great. They've, they've got us, you know, 100,000 followers. Well, you still have to pay to go reach those 100,000 followers. You have to pay an ad. And then just because you, they're your followers, when you post that ad into your own following, Facebook only gives you about 3% of those people. They don't give you all of them. You have to keep paying to get to those people. So, don't let someone convince you that because you've got a huge following, oh, you can reach them so cheap. No, you can't reach them cheap. Why not reach customers? Why reach people who already know about your brand? You know what I mean? So anyway. Don't go anywhere, gang. After the break, I ask Aaron to explain how we can then partner with influencers and creators to target their specific individual audience members and what the ethical boundaries are in doing so. That's coming up. Stay tuned. This year's NBA playoffs are going to feature a lot of great rookies. And FanDuel wants you to be one of them. Make your debut on FanDuel Sportsbook with promo code ROOKIE and your first bet is risk-free up to 1000 bucks. So you can bet the point spread, grab the money line, or build a same-game parlay. And if you make a rookie mistake, FanDuel will give you up to $1,000 back in site credit so you can take another shot. Okay, this guy's got potential. Make every moment more with FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Sign up and unlock your risk-free first bet up to $1,000. We're looking forward to seeing what you're made of. 21 plus in President Virginia. First online real money wager only. Refund issued as non-withdrawable site credit that expires in 14 days. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. If you are, uh, so if I cannot target uh, Cristiano, Cristiano Ronaldo's followers, mm-hmm. Um, in, in a normal, you know, ad by circumstance, right? If I, if I can get the reach, but I can't get the frequency, how can I get it with what you do if you're not working through or with Cristiano Ronaldo specifically? No, you can't. I, we have to be working with him. Okay. Now that leads me to the next question. How do you work with the influencer? What's in it for them? And why would they do this? Bingo. So like I said earlier, a lot of the, the influencers come to us through the brands, right? The brands bring it to us or uh, a lot of just by word of mouth, a lot of influencers have heard of what we do and they, they're already on board. So how it works with an influencer is really interesting. When an influencer signs in um, to our system, what we're doing is we're setting up to monetize all of his posts. So let's just say this, this influencer comes in and he's got a couple of years of posts going on. We're going to monetize his posts from years ago. Things to him that are worthless today, we're going to bring him money for because there are companies looking for those people who engaged in his audiences a year ago, two years ago, when he was on vacation in, you know, uh, in Denver, right? He was, whatever he's doing. Um, there are people in Denver, there are restaurants, there are all types of companies that are looking for those, that audience in that, in that group. So the way it works, a lot of influencers, the first thing they get concerned about is they're like, okay, are my followers going to know that you're running ads? 
No. The whole reason we're partners with um, Facebook is because what we do is we really clean out your feed on your Facebook feed. So when a brand runs an ad against an influencer's uh, audience, it's just an, just another ad that shows up on the feed. The ad doesn't have anything to do with the influencer. It doesn't say the influencer's name, doesn't use the influencer's face. It's completely an unendorsed ad, right? Okay. And it replaces an ad that was already going to be in his feed, which he may not be so interested in. Okay. Makes sense? Yep. So what we do for the influencer is we monetize their posts on a regular basis. Not only do we monetize them, but we can, we, it's called cross monetizing. There can be 10 brands. There can be a hundred brands using one of his audiences. He may have traveled, let's go back to Denver. He may have traveled to Denver and he did something in a, a restaurant, who knows? But all of a sudden there are one brand after another on our platform that are using his audiences. So he's being paid per impression on every single one of these ads that are going through his, his audiences. But the most important thing is he's getting this information back. So our software sends him information back on who's using his audiences and, and, and how effective they are. So the same influencer now who is, you know, he would vacation in Denver, what have you. And all, and let's just say he's a, uh, let's go back to Ronaldo. Let's say he's a soccer player. Okay. And all of a sudden he's getting food companies that are hitting him. And he sees these, these food uh, restaurants and so forth are using his and paying him for his audience. He, he's going to be like, well, wow, I have posts out there where I was doing you know, training posts and I'm getting nobody paying me for those. Mm-hmm. But these, these vacation, these food ones, I'm making a lot of money on. Yeah. The influencer is going to know right away who's following him. He's going to go, wait a minute. Um, I have people that are following me that are way more interested in food than, than soccer. So it will completely alter his feed. Okay. So on that point, it will, it could completely alter his feed. Is that not then, you know, almost doing the same thing in a different way as Hyatt coming in and saying, we want to send you on a vacation to this hotel and whatnot. We're going to disrupt your normally scheduled crap with our crap. And (laughs) now you're saying if the influencer sees all this back end data, Ooh, I'm going to stop posting about soccer. I'm going to start posting about spaghetti or whatever. Yeah. That's Isn't great. it the same thing? No, no. Because on one hand, you've got a hotel. There was no proof ever that mm. the followers of that guy were going to that hotel or they okay. even traveled, right? And But in our situation, we have absolute proof that his followers are doing X opposed to Y. And, I'll, and really good, I'll give you a quick example. We actually did work with a very, very popular soccer player um, with a very big shoe brand. And they made the assumption coming in that this soccer player, good looking guy, would have a tremendous amount of soccer followers. So it'd be great for this shoe brand. But after we ran the test against his audiences, they found out really quick that over 60% of his followers were 13 year old girls. So (laughs) the brand immediately began to pull out. This was a huge deal. But when they realized, wait a minute, we have a struggling female shoe line and apparel line. The same shoe company kept the contract with the giant soccer player, rolled that over to the female line, and they're killing it today. And wow. that goes on and on every day with influencers because you see amazing makeup and beauty influencers that are just you know killing it. But in reality, those are 18, 19-year-old boys that are following and liking, obviously, right? And they're not so makeup companies go in there and they try to make you know they, they try to use them for influencers and it, it fails feverishly. So it's not who you think. You know it, we have to get out of that mindset of who do we think is following them because of engagement. Nobody cares. Who cares about engagements or likes? That doesn't tell you who's following them. The only way you can do it is by testing an audience. Okay, so the the just to clarify again, I want to make sure I'm real crystal clear on this. <laughs> So this soccer player comes in and the the shoe company looks at the audience and says, oh, it's just a bunch of 13-year-old girls. But then they start to run ads to the 13-year-old girls for their, you know, uh, shoe line that better fits that demographic. They're not, this isn't the influencer doing content for the 13-year-old girl shoe. It's literally the shoe company saying, we're just going to put our ads for the shoe for the girls in front of the girls. Absolutely. The, 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 in this situation, the soccer player was never, he was never involved in an endorsement deal. These are all his audiences. He's making money. They're making money. Okay. Now here's my, my follow-up question to that, because again, I, you know, I go back to the old social media purist days and, and, and my part of my job is to call bullshit on certain things. 
So let me let me throw this out there at you. If an influencer is leveraging their audience and monetizing their audience in this way, allowing advertisers to mine the data behind their audience in order to present smarter ads to that audience, and they are not disclosing it to that audience, is that not either unethical or potentially an FTC violation? It's neither because the influencer is not involved at all. There's no endorsement, period. Hmm. It's a group of people that are following him. So there's absolutely zero liability. And, and, and I'll back this up with something else. So we're doing some work with the NBA. I'm sorry, with the NFL. Okay. And the NFL, that was the main concern of the NFL. So one thing I didn't know until we started working with them, the NFL players are extremely limited by what they can work with when it comes to influencer marketing because of liabilities, right? So that knocked out you know, half of the big players for the NFL. So when we stepped in, and their attorneys, of course, came in and with ours and reviewed the whole process with with Facebook. Keep in mind, we're, we're Facebook partners. So they realized, wow, there's absolutely no liability here because there's no endorsement. The, the, at no point in time is the influencer saying, I'm endorsing this product. I'm giving this product authority. It's simply an ad in front of consumers. I can see certain consumer protection leaning folks saying, yeah, but... The influencers should be telling us what they're doing. They should be disclosing the fact that, hey, all you people that engage with my content, all you people that follow me and whatnot, there's companies that are going to use that data to run ads to you. But but and and, I, and I'm allowing them to do that. There should be a level of disclosure in the spirit of being transparent. Agree or not? Absolutely. I agree because the owner of that audience is Facebook, not the influencer. Hmm. That's that's where so many people get lost in this game. Okay. It's not your audience. Now, you may have some directive in there with the division of that audience, but it's not your audience. It's Facebook's audience or Instagram, <laughs> whoever you're running in or TikTok, whoever it might be. Okay. So, that's the difference. Is it's not yours. You don't you don't own those people. It's okay. di- here's a here's a different a different um way to look at it. If you're a if you're a event, you're Nike, right? And you're selling shoes and, and you're in a Nike store and you've sold a thousand shoes that day to a thousand different people. Those, those people now, is a, they're an audience for Nike. They own that, that data of those people. Now that data, they're responsible for that data. That's a whole different game. That's data that was generated from the Nike store and its responsibility lies with the Nike store. So in this situation, it's completely different because it's a group of people that Facebook own and you're, the influencer is simply subdividing those people. Hmm. Interesting. I, I know I can hear the the pencils uh, and the pens rubbing <laughs> on the paper of the audience. There's about 10 audience members out there right now who are trying to find a way to call bullshit on this. I'll guarantee you because <laughs> I, I know my audience well enough to know there's enough purists out there. They're going to be like, oh, this guy's up to no good. Uh, so we may hear from them soon, but I think you kind of got me convinced. I, I, it's That well, sounds really smart. Yeah, it's it's really the way it's the way the the future we believe of of influencer marketing. And keep in mind the one the biggest argument we get from a lot of people is that there's content creators and there's influencers, two different people. We're talking about influencers on this podcast, not content creators. Content creators, okay. it's a whole different game. So, you know, when you're uh, when you're a creator, you're, you're if you're if you're paying for a content creator to put great content in front of you, you know, create great ads and put them in front of people, that's different. So in the influencer world, if you're claiming you're an influencer and you can go out there and you can influence your following, and that's why people are paying you, this is the direction it will go in. There's no question about it. This is the direction. The direction is let the influencer do what they do and then let the brand sit back and collect the audience because that's what they want. That's what they need. So you're talking about the difference between creators and influencers. Am I reading the tea leaves there and reading between the lines correctly? What you are proposing is really more for uh, or more appropriate or or a more efficient use of your dollars if you want to use the audiences and the content of a celebrity influencer, someone who's famous and has a lot of followers versus someone who has a lot of followers because of the content they create. Is that the difference we're talking about between content creators and quote unquote influencers? 
No, that's not what I meant. Um, I kind of what I mean is is that uh, we've seen in the past few years that it's split up. Between, you know, when you say influencer marketing, it a lot of people get turned off. A lot of brands do because they're using them now as as, con- as content creatives. Right. And what I mean by that is you've got an influencer who knows who he is or she is, but um, she's really good at creating right content, creating really interesting stuff for that brand. Mm-hmm. So in this situation, the brand may pay that that individual to create amazing content for their brand, but then they're going to take that content and put it in front of their audiences, not the influencer audience, right? Okay. And that's the big difference because if you're a content creator, you're not saying, hey, I can influence all these people behind me, all these followers to buy your stuff. You're saying, I can create something for you that you can put in front of your audiences and you'll sell better. And that's yeah. fantastic. We think that's that's amazing. And we see that's how the influencer world is splitting. You've got you know influencers, people who- yeah are selling their followers, right? And then you have people who sell their their creatives, their art, right. their gift. Well, and I think there's, there's, I would say the third category is that that blur between the lines because you've yeah. got a lot of, of content creators who will, like for instance, if I'm a brand and I'm sitting down with a content creator and I may ultimately want to use their content on my channels because I like what they create and whatnot, but the creator slash influencer on the other hand is typically coming to the table with you want my audience and that's what I'm going to sell you because I have collected these people and they are mine and you can't get to them unless you go through me. Yeah. And there, there is a difference between someone who's like, Hey, I'll create the content. As long as you'll pay me to create the content, I'll create the content. And you, you do whatever you want to with it. But I think most quote unquote influencer slash content creators come to the table with, I'm going to create the content for my audience and it can be about you. Yep. yep. And so that's where I, that's where I would kind of say there's a third blurred audience there, but yeah, that's, it's a really good way of putting it. It's a, it's a good Good definition. And a lot of them are confused right now. It's, it's such a new new field that a lot of the, we see the upcoming influencers are confused themselves. Are they an influencer? Are they a content creator? Yeah, no doubt. Well, Aaron, this is uh, fascinating stuff. And uh, I'm sure there's a lot of brand managers and even some agency folks out there going, holy crap, where do I learn more? Because this sounds like, you know, a new way of thinking that can actually be much more productive for their clients or their brand. So how do people find you and the posse on the interwebs? Yeah, I say, you know, the like I said earlier, test, 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 you know, if you whatever you're doing, any brand manager, any anybody, test it. And if you're not testing it, that's which is what we do. Um it's going to cost you a lot of money and a lot of time. So yeah, posse.io. So that's where we are. Um, our platform sits at posse.io um, and you can get us right there, you know, whatever you need. Um, and we'll, we'll uh, walk you through and explain how it works. That's awesome. Aaron, I appreciate the time, man. And I, I know I, I've already made an appointment uh, for uh, yep. you to talk to our folks here at Cornette. Yep. I mean, yep. this is, this is smart stuff. So uh, uh, thanks for bringing it to our attention. We're, we're happy to uh, tell everybody about it. Jason, thank you, man. Your, your podcast is just off the hook, which is why we reached out. For those of you who are the social media purist types out there, part of me is with you here. There's something that feels a little off about this. But when you do consider it's not the influencer's audience, but a segment of Facebook or Instagram or TikTok's audience, the segment that happens to follow that individual, I start to see this as a paid media bonanza. I'll be digging into tests with some clients and partners soon, and we'll, of course, report back. But Posse.io is probably worth putting on your radar, too. The URL is Posse, P-O-S-S-E dot I-O, Posse dot I-O. Folks, don't forget to drop a rating or review of Winfluence on your favorite podcast app. We are on all of them, I think. Apple, Google, Spotify, Stitcher, iHeartMedia, Podchaser, TuneIt, Good Pods. If we're not where you listen, let me know. We will correct that ASAP. I hate to have you have to go someplace else to hear this show. So let me know where you listen. If we're not there, I want to make sure we are. Whatever app or your listening mode, if you are listening to us right now, and don't let this shock you, you you are, uh, look for the stars or ratings on that app or site and go tap or click. Let us know how we're doing. If you'd like a deep dive on influencer marketing topics every so often, subscribe to my email newsletter at jason.online slash subscribe. I send it every four to six weeks or so and go deep on a topic to make your influence marketing smarter. Plus, I've started to add like a a Winfluence tool of the month and a Winfluence insight of the month. So I'm changing it up and adding a few features. So go subscribe to that at jason.online slash subscribe. 
And I'd love for you to help make a future episode of this here show awesome. Ask your question about influence or influence marketing that you want my answer to or take on. Send me an email to jason at jasonfalls.com. If you're feeling adventurous, record a voice memo on your phone and email me that file. I'll let you ask the question right here on the show using the recording. Regardless of how you ask it, I may use your comment on a future episode or your question to inspire a show topic. If I do, I'll send you a signed copy of Winfluence the book as a thank you. Winfluence, the influence marketing podcast, is an audio companion to my book, Winfluence, reframing influencer marketing to ignite your brand. Get your copy online at winfluencebook.com. While you're there, sign up for the latest ideas about influence marketing delivered in my periodic newsletter or book me to speak to your company or organization about influence marketing. If you or someone you know is an influencer, a brand manager that uses influence marketing, or one of the many amazing people working in the influence marketing services world, and they would make a good guest for the show, email me at jason at jasonfalls.com. Our theme music is One More Look by the K-Club and Grammy Award-winning producer Jaquire King. Thanks for listening, and remember, when it's not about the person, but about results, it's Winfluence. This podcast is coming to you on MPN, the Marketing Podcast Network. There's another show on MPN you might want to check out. I'm Dave Delaney, the host of The Nice Podcast. Each episode is about communication, collaboration, and becoming better leaders of today's fastest growing tech companies. Subscribe to The Nice Podcast today. It'll make your marketing that much smarter. Just visit nicepodcast.co or search for The Nice Podcast with Dave Delaney wherever you get your podcasts. This podcast is heard along the Marketing Podcast Network. For more great marketing podcasts, visit marketingpodcasts.net.